All right, somehow I did this whole thing and I lost it. And I don't know what happened to it. Okay, but uh, Bob Bob, I believe, um, asked me to do three down, uh, odd spacing um, for the duo and uh, the backside. So zone going this way and duo going this way. Okay, the veer side here and the accordion side here. I just did the whole thing. Somebody called. I turned it off. I must have turned it off instead of pausing it. So, and I lost the whole thing. I don't even know where it was. Okay, so anyway, three down to us is two defensive ends, and we determine who the defensive ends are. We, we say that they're guys that can contain rush, and one guy in between them, that's three down. We still use the same four spots for the linebackers. Okay. And uh, we'll go from there. Let's start with the accordion side first. Okay, obviously we're, we're going to run that a gap, and you know whether it's butt of the center, we don't we don't like to be wider than than the gap. And I think from the pistol, it's you know it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty nondescript. Okay, I've seen the pistol slide all the way out this way, so no, not a big deal. But anyway, in three down, the tackle has got that spot. And he's going to check that spot. If this guy doesn't hit him right away, he's going to dig that end. Shoulder roll, check the spot, dig the end, two hands. Okay? He's going to, he's going to, if this man hits it, he's just going to let the end go. He's going to block him. That's the end of that. He's going to match him. And here we go. The guard, and because we have leverage, we don't need to skip here. The guard's going to shuffle over and hammer that dig. Of course, if the tackle lets the end go, the guard's going to grab him. He's going to match him, okay? Tear him out, do whatever he can. And if the defensive end long sticks, the guard is going to put his hands on him and stuff him to the center, okay? Because if he's long sticking, somebody's coming, okay? And that's just the way it is. But if these guys don't hit it any, way, any which way, He's going to dig, and he is going to hammer this out for the fold-over spot. Okay? It's pretty simple. Here, the center made an odd odd call because he wants to work with that guard. And they are going to do the old post and drive. Okay? A chip and cover. They are going to get hip to hip. Nothing comes through. they got to scrape this guy. This, Guard is going to skip over and scrape paint off of that center's hip. And it's more important for him to get to the center's hip and get his head in front of that nose than anything else. Okay. The center is going to chip, and he has leverage. He has plenty of leverage on this man. Now, the man might go over the top, but he, he, we're, we're hoping that the whole thing, the, the way the back is running, is going to draw him in here. Uh, if this thing gets shut off here and the backer goes over the top and the tailback sees that, he goes sailing through and everything's good. He's not in a hurry to get off this chip, okay? And if the linebacker starts to move that way, he's going to try and take the chip to him, okay? But basically, he's hanging on that chip, and they are gonna. They gotta kill this guy. The key to this thing is to kill him. Get him moving. We don't want him moving this way. We don't necessarily want him moving that way. We want him moving right at the spot. Okay. Now that's pretty simple stuff. In odd spacing, we didn't do it. We we kept the sniffer here, but I think I put him here against odd spacing. Okay. So we got this thing all, all set. Now if that nose rocks across the guard, the guard's gonna stuff him. And it's important that he doesn't rotate. He doesn't. He can't rotate his shoulders and chase the guard, the nose guard, because if he does, that backer is going to hit it, and he's the only guy that can protect that gap. Okay, there's a, there's a pretty popular stunt where this guy rocks out, he fits it right in, and this guy comes around. Okay, that linebacker fitting right into the a gap. I'm expecting him to block it. I'm expecting him to come around to get blocked by the center. Okay, and I'm expecting the nose to get blocked by the tackle. We'll talk about the tackle in a second. But it's a pretty simple idea. We've got, we got to get that thing punched. Do not rotate. Do not chase that nose with your shoulders. Don't do it. 
happens when you do, you close your leg and you can't control that gap. That nose goes across your head. Keep that leg open, that leg open, so that you can pick up linebackers. Okay? Simple as that. This guy keeps that leg open. All right? Simple as that. This guy is honking it. All right? When he digs, he's honking it. He's keeping that leg open. All right? Okay, now getting to the tackle. Whether this is a four-eye or, or just a plain old nose-up guy or even a five technique, he wants to chip, okay, shoulder roll and chip, and shuffle this way, shuffle. Okay, he wants to get in front of that linebacker. His job is to keep that linebacker from skinning that gap, okay. If the linebacker and, and the nose are shoulder to shoulder, it's a tough row to hoe. But if he can <coughs> skip excuse me, if he can chip and shuffle to it, okay, and to tell you the truth, if he could chip and, and skip, I'd probably let him do it because he doesn't have leverage, but he does have depth. Now, nowadays, people are mugging these guys up. To me, that's another, that's a, that's a five down, okay, or if it's just one backer, that's a four down. But there's a bunch of ways, you know, pin and pull, all that stuff for the muggers. I don't want to talk about that right now, okay. But he's going to chip, shuffle, okay? Chip, I, I'd have to work out the footwork. I never I never uh, thought about skipping. But he's got to get his head, he's got to get his shoulder pad, his outside shoulder pad under this guy's chin, get his head in front so that he denies that access. And if he, when you practice this stuff, the way we do it, we'll take these two guys and put them over here and practice their work, their combo work. We'll have four on five. And we'll do this. And we'll take this guy and take him, the sniffer, and bring him over here and do their combo work. And we'll have these four guys work in this. Then we flip it around. Okay. We 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 don't do two on twos. We do one on ones when we're working this stuff. Okay, because it's so violent. But we don't we don't do two on twos. We don't believe in two on twos. We believe in, in beating, you know, the, the barks and the uh, the loops and the twists and all that stuff, and you can't do that two on two. You can't work it. In other words, we don't work these two necessarily together, but in isolation, we work all five of them together, and that's that's the way we like to do it. But anyway, if he can keep that man out of that gap, now, you know, we've talked about the stun and the coil and all that. If he's 300 pounds and he's 220, Okay, he should be able to stun that guy and stone him. Remember, this guy's running. Okay, he's got momentum on his side, but he doesn't have a lot of mass. Okay, and it's like him riding a bicycle when he's running. You can you can get him knocked over pretty good if you if you get your feet underneath you, and you want to use your hands. Now, if he's a little weeny kind of a linebacker, you know, nickel linebacker, and I like running the ball on third and long. Um, you know, you can probably just block him with your hands. Okay, you can keep your your shoulder out of it, but I think I think a big Matt Millen type guy, big you know uh, Buffalo Bills old school Buffalo Bills type guy, you want to uh, you know you want to get that shoulder down. But the key is don't arrow, don't arrow. All right, if you arrow, you're gonna get pushed down. He's gonna go over the top, and if he goes through, you, if you arrow, you're gonna be chasing him. He's gonna hit the tailback in the backfield. Don't arrow. Okay. Some people say arrow. I don't. I don't buy it. Okay, don't do it. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to skip and cover this man. If he skins out, it's easy. Get squared air. Here comes the looper. If he rides, if he if he jumps in front of the tackle, tackle will push him. We don't kind. Of, you know, we don't like that when that happens because if this guy doesn't scrape out, it's a, it's a tough it's tough to get to him. He'll just sit there and wait. Okay. So we want to shove this guy down, and if that's the case, we tell him, you've got him blocked, we're going to read him, or you got him blocked, we're going to read him. The problem with reading this guy is you're really reading two. Okay? If they both close, you've got to pull the ball. Okay? Uh, blocking this guy, you're only reading one. Now you get more handoffs, and you got to be able to block this guy, but I like it better. Okay? You can put him here and trap him out, but you got to go this way. So if you're if you're if you give him a little leverage and chase that tackle and get to the tackle, not to the end, get to the tackle, you'll blow him up pretty good. 
Okay. So that's a three down. Uh, I don't think it's, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I mean, you running this stuff versus three down, tight end on the line is a little tough. Uh, you know, better off reading this guy. But tight end on the line is pin and pull. We used to run the pin and pull with motion and kill, we'd kill him. And tell tackle, you're going inside, okay, kill him with the sniffer or the tight end or motion guy, pull this guy for him. This guy comes around, tailback jabs and follows that guard. Off we go. Um, but again, against three down, all this stuff is great. That guy has got to get murdered. Okay, he's got to get killed. And if he can get killed, you, I think you got a pretty good chance to make some yardage. Okay, and uh, you know, coach this guy up a little bit to make sure that he doesn't allow that to happen. Skin is going to, he's going to get to the tackle, to the tackle, not to the end, to the tackle. Okay. And there we go. <coughs>